What is up guys, TEJ here, and in today's video, we are going to be reviewing the brand new Ping i230 irons. So, let's get right into it. All right guys, so the i230 irons from Ping Golf, these are actually replacing the i210 irons, which came out about five years ago in 2018. Now the reason I love the i200 series from Ping is because it really bridges the gap between a player's distance iron and a smaller headed CB. To me, it's a slightly bigger and more forgiving player's iron that is also extremely consistent, which is why we see these in the bags of a lot of tour pros, because they do not have hot spots like many players' distance irons do. Now not a ton has changed in in these 230s over the 210 but there are a few things and first and foremost they've changed out the badge in the cavity to kind of help improve feel and sound over the 210 model which i think is a good thing because i did not particularly love the feel and sound of that model especially in the shorter clubs additionally they've added lightweight elastomer material to the head which has freed up discretionary weight which they have pushed lower in the head meaning they've moved the center of gravity lower in the head in hopes of getting a little bit more height out of these irons and a little bit more distance aside from those two two things and kind of the bigger story of these 230s is the fact that they've added a toe screw and what that toe screw is doing is kind of allowing them to balance out the amount of weight they put in the heel and the toe which should help increase forgiveness on off centered strikes in terms of grooves these 230s have pings and micro max milled grooves and also that hydro pearl 2.0 finish on the face for more consistency in wet weather conditions now one small adjustment they have made in these 230s in terms of looks is in those three through five irons specifically they are a little bit more compact in comparison to that of the 210s but in terms of offset very similar and the blade lengths of the 6 through U wedge are actually going to be quite similar to that of the I210s. Now in terms of a stock shaft in these 230s they come stock steel wise with the dynamic gold 105 and in terms of graphite you're going to be looking at the ping Alta CB black. In terms of a stock grip you're going to be looking at the Lampkin crossline in a black colorway. As far as retail price goes these are going to be offered for $1312.50 for the the steel shafted four through pitching wedge set and $1,400 for the four through pitching wedge graphite shafted set. Now that is pretty much a full rundown on these I-230s in terms of specs. So let's head out to the golf course and get to testing. Right guys, so we're out here on the first hole. We've got about 150 yards, slightly downwind to I would say a pretty middle pin. As we look down at these I-230s, really good shape. The offset, although it's there, they've done a great job at blending it. It does not really look like there's any in the short clubs. A little bit thicker top line. I think, honestly, these look absolutely great for the style of iron they are. So let's go ahead and hit one. Feel really good. It's right at it think that's a little deep, a little bit more downwind than I originally thought. In terms of feel, really good. Looks really good. Good start. Out here at the third hole now, and we've got about 245, which for me is not a four iron, but I'm going to try to kind of hit a low drawing four iron, see if maybe I can get it to run up. We'll see what happens. As we look down at these in the long clubs, definitely a little bit more offset, which is not my forte. I don't personally love it but at the same time I think for this style of iron being a little bit bigger a little bit more forgiving style of player's iron I think the offset is pretty well done so let's go ahead and hit one see what we got miss hit that hung it out to the right I think it's gonna find that bunker that was not really a good shot or a good strike but at the same time although that was a pretty big miss strike still felt pretty soft which is a big improvement I think over the I-210s for me if I would have miss hit that and it was an I-210 I think it would have felt a lot more clicky so in terms of feel these are actually quite soft, which is very impressive in my opinion, especially for a cast golf club. All right, guys, so now out here at the fourth hole, we've got a right pin. I'm going to try to move this a little bit left to right, see if we can curve these I-230s. That is really good, right at it. Flighted too. Yeah, great shot. And that's something I really like about these I-230s. Now for me, I found that they really want to go straight on the majority of shots, but as you can see right there, at the same time, very workable. I hit sort of a lower fade, and first of all, it faded. Second of all, very easy to flight, even though these irons tend to want to peak higher than some other players' irons I have tried. So in terms of workability, very, very impressive in my opinion. And another thing I'll mention about these irons is with that strike, the turf interaction was extremely good. Now, it's not super soft out here, 
normally with higher bounce wider sold golf clubs i tend to struggle in firmer conditions but i'll tell you what i've been playing these for the better part of two weeks and i have not struggled at all whether it be in soft or firm conditions alike which is just absolutely awesome to see all right so we're out here at six now and hit the drive long par five we're gonna go ahead and lay up with a four iron and we'll just hit a stock shot see what we got i mean that is just really nice what i absolutely love about these irons is especially in the long clubs they're so easy to elevate you don't really see that with a very controllable player's iron with a four iron especially that thing went straight up in the air very easy to stop i think that's going to be a huge advantage for players who struggle kind of launching their longer irons out here at the sixth again and we've laid up we've got about 130 yards to a back hole location i got a pitching wedge in hand i'm going to try to go ahead and flight one in there and we'll see what we got once again, really nice flight and a good shot, about 15 feet right of the hole. And I'll say it again, kind of keep mentioning it, but I just love how you can flight these irons. You saw that four iron went straight up in the air on the last shot. And at the same time, I can turn around and hit one lower. I think that is so important when it comes to players' irons. So very, very well done from a trajectory workability perspective. On the seventh hole now, we've got about 155 yards or so and a little wind off the right, kind of into. It's going to be an eight iron for me. Middle pin, going to try to go right at it. Yeah, pretty good shot. Something I haven't really touched on earlier that I want to talk about a little bit more in depth now is really the feel of these irons. These feel incredibly good, and me personally, I don't think I would be able to tell the difference between this and a Forge Golf Club because they feel very, very soft. Ping has done a great job at engineering this back cavity to make these irons feel really, really nice. And additionally, I mentioned it a little bit earlier, but turf interaction is superb. Even given the fact that these are higher bounce, a little bit wider sold, they've done a great job at having a little bit of trailing edge relief and additionally some roll into that leading edge they move through the ground very very nicely something i've been quite impressed with all right guys so the next thing i want to do here is hit a fairway bunker shot for you guys i've talked about the soles a lot we'll see kind of how they work through the bunker i suspect they'll be very nice and solid yeah really good just about 20 feet left of the hole from 180 yards i think that is just such a great thing about these irons especially is as good as they are through the grass this little bit wider so a little bit more bounce is just absolutely amazing through the bunker super good to see all right so the last thing i'm going to do before we head back to the house is actually hit a ball out of the rough now not a ton of rough down here in florida but i think the most important thing and one of the big attributes to the i-230 is the fact that they do not really have hot spots you see with most players distance iron you got those hollow body designs very thin faces and occasionally especially out of the rough you'll catch that jumper that flies you know 10 yards over the green and kind of screws up your round so let's go ahead and hit one out of the rough and see what happens this for me is going to be a full eight iron about 160 yards or so really sitting up if i hit it good most irons would jump now what's funny about that shot is I caught it right in the middle of the face, but it actually came up a little bit short, a little bit of wind into us. And I think that is the absolutely amazing thing about these irons is they are super controllable. You're just not gonna catch jumpers. You're not gonna catch those shots that go 10 yards over the green, completely out of nowhere. Distance control today has been great out of the fairway and it's just as good out of the rough. Really, really nice to see. All right guys, so back from the golf course and let's go ahead and break these irons down into some different categories, starting with looks. Now in terms of looks, I think these I-230 are very well done. They're very clean looking iron. No crazy coloring, no crazy badging, just a classy look. Sitting in your bag, I think they look very, very nice. And something I really love that they did is they're sort of a brushed satin finish. There's very little, if any glare on these irons, which is exactly what I like to see in my iron sets. At a dress, the shaping is extremely well done, at least in my opinion. And in terms of sizing, definitely on the larger side, kind of leaning more towards a player's distance size as opposed to a smaller headed CB. The top line is a bit thicker as well, but those things to me really inspire confidence in these irons. And like I said earlier in the video, that's what these irons are. They're sort of bridging the gap between a player's distance and a smaller headed CB. So I think from a looks perspective in terms of size in terms of shape very very well done getting into offset now and these definitely have a decent amount throughout the set what i will say is ping has done a very good job at blending it in the shorter clubs i would say seven through pitching wedge you don't really notice the offset as you get down into the four five six iron that's where you see a little bit more of it but once again i think that bit of offset is more confidence inspiring than anything getting into feel now and this is an iron that genuinely surprised me now these irons 
are cast, but Ping has done an incredible job at making these feel very soft around the entirety of the face. And honestly, I would argue if you handed this to most people blindly, they could not tell that these are cast in comparison to forged golf clubs. Additionally, these are not even made out of carbon steel. They're made out of stainless steel. And still, I don't think many people would be able to tell. They are a very soft feeling iron, which I think is absolutely very, very well done. Additionally, Ping has touted some sound and feel improvements in these 230s over the 210s. And having briefly used the I-210s for a couple of rounds, I do genuinely feel that these are a lot less clicky than those irons. Moving into workability now, and these performed very nicely from that perspective. Now, in terms of draw and fade, I really found no issue turning them over or hitting fades. And I think the majority of players will not struggle with that as well. But really the best thing for me was actually workability in terms of trajectory, higher and lower. From a stock shot perspective, I noticed my peak height was higher than other players' irons I've tested, which is why it was so amazing to me at how easy these were to flight. There was a round I played in around a 25 mile an hour win, and I had so many good flighted shots, which was just shocking because these are really meant to go up in the air. But in terms of being able to move trajectory like that, I am very impressed with the I-230s. On to forgiveness now, and once again, this is an area where I was extremely impressed with these irons. I've mentioned it before, and I'll continue to say it. I think the real beauty of these irons is you're getting the forgiveness of a player's distance iron, but in the package of a very consistent and controllable one-piece forge CB. Distance-wise, I notice these travel very close to my stock number on miss hits, even really bad miss hits, which was awesome. And in terms of dispersion, I don't really know how to describe it, but for some reason, these irons just want to go straight. They don't really want to go offline, something I have just not really seen before, but I really love to see in these irons. And honestly, I would argue that these are some of the most forgiving players irons I have tested in recent history. Turf interaction is another area where I was just extremely surprised at how well these performed. If you've seen my other videos, you know that I really don't like higher bounce of wider soles, which these clubs have, but I was extremely impressed at how well these travel through the turf, not just in soft conditions, but also firmer conditions as well. Now, I always think that you should take these outside and test them for yourself, make sure they're going to work for your conditions in terms of turf and your swing type. But I think that these will work very, very well for a lot of people in terms of turf interaction. The last area I want to talk to you guys about with these irons is going to be distance. And once again, an area where I was very impressed. What I like about these irons is although they are a hair strong, they're only just that, a hair strong. The seven iron in this set is 33 degrees, which is still far weaker than most players' distance irons out there. And in my opinion, offers a ton of consistency in terms of launch and spin for those players who are looking for consistency and control. But what's really cool is I actually found myself picking up around two miles an hour ball speed with these irons in comparison to player CBs of the exact same loft. So I think some of the changes they've made to the cavity of these 230s really has helped pick up a little bit of distance. And it's great to see that I'm still very consistent in terms of launch and spin. Don't have to do anything else, not loft jacking these irons, and they are going a little bit further. I think that's awesome to see. All right, so that pretty much covers all my thoughts on these Ping I-230s. And in terms of a rating, I'm gonna give these a 9.7 out of 10. Truthfully, these are a super impressive iron and honestly genuinely shocked me at how much I enjoyed playing them because it's not normally an iron that I would go for. The looks are really good, feel is solid, they're workable, forgiving, consistent, and overall just offer a ton of great attributes for the better player. Now there are two very small things that I will critique about these irons, even though I gave it such a high rating. And the first thing for me is gonna be the offset. Now I think they did a great job of blending it, but if you do look closely, you can see that it is there. And as you get into the longer clubs, you can definitely see that it is there, which is just not something that I personally love. But once again, it's a very small critique. I think for this style of iron, the offset is actually really nicely done. The second thing, and maybe the bigger thing, would be the fact that these aren't forged. Now, I mentioned it earlier, I think these feel absolutely great, just as good as many forged irons, but for me it actually comes down to a fitting perspective. It can be a real pain to bend cast golf clubs, and additionally, after you've bent them, they tend to want to move back to their original specs over time, which can be a bit annoying, so it would be interesting to see if Ping ever decides to release a forged i200 series model at some point in the future. All that being said, I really cannot say enough good things about these irons. They are easily one of the coolest designs out there right 
right now because they bridge that gap between a player's distance iron and a very consistent player's CV, which is why these irons are so successful out on tour. And because of that, I think anybody who tries these will be genuinely impressed and happy with how they perform. Guys, that's a review. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a like. Comment if you have any questions at all. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Go ahead and click that notification bell. And also make sure you're following us on our other socials, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok. We'll catch you in the next video. Peace.